Well, as of today, it has been three years since we launched Pedalbox with our first episode going and collecting that little chassis at night and buying it in the dark. It's kind of hard to believe just how much it's changed over yeah. these three years. It's gone from this little tiny thing down to even less where we cut most of it off. And yeah. now the, the scale and engineering in it is pretty impressive, it I is think. It's absolutely massive compared to where it was. It's still, it's actually a bit bigger than it was before. I think we're about 30% longer, 30% wider, but we're still quite short. So we've done pretty well there. Uh, but this will be episode number 62 going out on Sunday. So this is hopefully going to go out on the 9th if I get all of my uh, poop in a group. Uh, and that will be a fantastic achievement because that is all of our wiring. So you have an ultra long bonus length episode with Chris, freshly returned from Wales, who then sat over a hot soldering iron for six weeks. It was uh, it was a great way to spend my entire summer, pretty yeah. much as it turns out, in lockdown welcome, in Reading. Soldering. Welcome home, <laughs> solder. On yeah. the bright side, while we were doing that, the SD1's gone into the shop, as we mentioned in yes. the last episode. Yeah. And I now have, as of a couple of days ago, um, about 15 or so photos back from the shop of the work that's been done so far. Yeah, you actually mentioned, because I've just been editing the video for Sunday going out, that the SD1 was going into the shop and it had yep. gone under the knife, and you now have actual proof of yep. work happening. Yeah, it's uh, it looks pretty violent, actually, what I've seen so far. So currently all that's happened is it, it's, it's getting both front wings replaced, both sills replaced, and an entire rear three quarter, as well as a couple of other little bits and pieces. It's here a and there. lot. Yeah, it's a fair like, bit of metal. And to be fair, its body is in better condition than the Thunderbird. Yeah. And it's having more metal put back into it. Yeah, but I'm kind of cheating because I've still got like entire panels available, right? <laughs> yeah. I right. can go, yeah, you know, I've got this little patch of you know metal here that I need to fix yeah, up. It, but rather than cut it out, just you know, throw a whole new whole new piece on. It's the it, easy way to go. It doesn't cost you five hundred dollars to get three hundred dollars worth of yeah. parts delivered to put panels in and and you don't need to bring them back in a suitcase to circumvent that. Yeah. So, and so the most expensive piece I've bought so far is an entire rear three quarter. It's the entire rear stay all the way down from so the roof. Cheap. The entire rear panel part way around into the light cluster. And that was £270. Yeah. So SD1 parts, where they're available, are quite cheap. Which yeah. is why I've just replaced so much metal on Yeah, because you might as well, once you're cutting out this much yeah. at a body shop, you might as well do this much. Yeah, because it's going to be a full respray anyway. Yeah. So, you know, there's really no harm. So, yeah, yeah, let's run through a couple of the pictures real quick. I'll just pull them up on my phone to commentate, and Abe's going to overlay them. We've got one here. This is from when you just started work on it. He's pulled the doors off so that you can put some bracing in there. Because with the wing and the sill and everything off, the body might sag. The SD1, it Was turns out... Was he only out, supposed to pull the bloody doors off? <laughs> He's supposed to pull a lot more than just the bloody doors off, thankfully. <laughs> He's welded a couple of braces in. Um, which we can oh, see. Some of the carnage. Now, in fairness, the SD1 apparently is a really stiff chassis. It's oh, really? Of, apparently, it's why it did quite well in motorsport, according huh. to some YouTube yeah. video I watched a little while ago from an automotive Throw historian. Throw a cage in it, it'll be fine. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's weird. It looks it looks really quite naked with all this metal off. Um, so we've got the entire front outer wing removed, um, which is also a structural wing, it turns out. I was hoping to put fiberglass ones on, but the, the outer oh. wing, yeah, to, to save weight, oh. both halves of the wing are structural. Okay, that's Yes, yeah, so you get harder. more strength to weight, but yeah. obviously it means it's a bit harder to remove them. So there's one here of what I believe is the driver's footwell looking forward. So I think that hole in the bottom is like in the front. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I'm just kind of guessing because it doesn't look like that's in the floor yeah. because this looks too, you mm -hmm. know, this on the right looks too much. Everything that uh, seems a bit manky in these images is getting fixed. Like it's all yeah, accounted yeah. for in the time, so we're all good. He hasn't okay. had to say it's going to be a bunch more money. It is still in better condition than that picture of an alpha that I put up on Instagram oh, and Twitter uh, yes. a few weeks back now. Um, yeah, this basically had nothing of the inner arches left. On either side, you could see clear through from the arches to the front. And then we've got another shot from the front showing the new front wing yeah. and the new cell on. I don't think they're actually like welded, welded in yet. Yeah. No, I think it's all still clamped together. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's all starting to take shape. That is good news for everybody yeah. that has been waiting for SD1 to return. Chris has also been waiting for the SD1 to return, yep. uh, as have I, because we've got a lot of plans. Although Chris has a lot of plans for it, and I need to video it, edit it, and try and keep up, because you're going to go pretty hard on that. Yeah, so I didn't actually mention it in that episode, but the crank is actually quite deeply scored. So it's going to oh, be a regret. Uh, the crank's going to have to get reground. Um, oh. I think the camshaft was in decent nick, but I can't remember. So like, yeah. it definitely needs a fair bit of mm -hmm. love. The good news is I've found that if I grind the crank down by about two mil, it turns out there's a chap in one in our comments, a guy called Simon by Turbo. So cheers to you. Um, Thanks, Simon. Found that Nissan 
what was it the L twenty eight E, the engine that went into the two eighty Z, the two point eight yeah. straight six, actually has a very very similar shape and size con rod. That's very convenient to my engine. So there's a, there's a couple of little bits and pieces I need to do. Like I'll need to rebush the piston or something yeah. like that and cr and grind the crank down a bit. But the crank's getting reground anyway. So Might this is well. kind of doable. Yeah. yeah. I've also got sitting back in Wales due to a happy accident with the supplier. I have a matched pair of Holset HE221W turbos. Now, running both of them would be a bit silly because each of them individually can flow up to about 300 horsepower worth of air. So I'm yeah. just sat here like I've got 600 plus horsepower worth of turbos, but I'm only going to use one of them. I need that spool. So as of the episode coming this weekend, we're going to have all of the wiring in, or at least as much of the wiring we can do right now, because the last bit we need to do before we can put all of the service items for the ECU in is we need to put the clutch line in and the brake line in, because we need to put those two switches onto hydraulic systems and hydraulic switch units rather than the mechanical ones that would normally sit behind the pedals. That's because we just don't have enough space behind the pedals for them, or at least not in any reliable fashion. Not that we can figure out, though. No. So we're going to run a couple of little hydraulic sensors onto each of them. That will keep all the systems happy, and then we just need to get the ECU demobilized and prepped, ready to go on and crank. And all being well, when we put a battery on then, it should start, which would be really nice. First fire in 2020. Yeah. In the meantime, if you want to support us, you can buy merch. We have both these t-shirts in grey and black, and hoodies hanging on the back, as well as hats, caps and beanies. And we've got a new t-shirt, and the order has gone in for it. Our fun is better than good t-shirt should be here soon. We have got a couple of pre-orders already, which is really nice. Uh, so that will be here, and we'll be getting those out. And I'm hoping to get some mugs done, ready for Christmas. So stocking fillers ahoy. You can have a beanie and a mug, and you can get your orders in now, and we'll get them posted before Christmas. And as always, you can jump on patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show and support us directly for as little as a dollar a month. For that, you get access to all of our videos a day early, and you get to talk to us on Discord, which we've so far completely failed to mention, although it's been running for like six months. Yeah, we're pretty terrible at self-promotion, as you can tell, but we are thankful to all of our Patreons who've helped us out so far. You can see all their names in the credits, and you can join them too. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.